Hello and welcome to the Killick & Co podcast for Friday the 1st of April 2016. Looking at some of the macro news uh, this week, there was fairly dovish comments that came out from the Fed Chair Janet Yellen, which caused bond markets to rally uh, and as expectations of further interest rate rises in the US were pushed out. So looking at the expectations for the, uh, the, the June meeting of the Fed, uh, expectations of a rate rise now have fallen to around 20% after being as high as 54% in mid-March. In, in terms of other macro news, so the market is waiting for the announcement of the uh, non-farm payrolls later today. So expectations are for around 205,000 jobs to have been created in March. Uh, this will be slightly lower than the 242,000 uh, created in February. However, this is very much in line with the monthly average that we've seen over the, sort of the past four years. And, and in terms of the, the March ADP employment report, which came out earlier this, this week, that was at a, a level of 200,000 um, jobs, and that was sl- stronger than expected. So the, the likelihood of a disappointment in the non-farm payrolls today does look fairly limited. Moving to the UK, economic data has been fairly mixed. Uh, so we have seen uh, GDP growth for fourth quarter being revised upwards to 2.1%, previously been um, announced at 1.9%. However, this has been off, this has been offset by a, a weaker than expected current account deficit, which came in at 33 billion, uh, that was higher than the 21 billion expected. And looking at as a percentage of GDP at around 7%, that is now the highest level on record. And you can see how it has tracked sort of over the last 10 years. Moving on to some stock news this week, it's been a pretty quiet week, but Accenture did report its its second quarter earnings um, uh, towards the end of last week. The important thing for us there was the performance out of their digital division, where the strong growth continues there, so they reported growth of over 25% in the, in the, the, the first half of the year, and that business is now almost 40% of their, uh, their total revenue. And this is the key to our investment case for Accenture. We, be- we believe it'll be a major beneficiary as businesses look for third party help in terms of dealing with technological disruption. Just looking at the week ahead, very quiet. Um, so on, on Tuesday, we've got Walgreens Boots in the US. Uh, and then on, on, on Thursday, we've got Marks and Spencers here in the UK as, as well as Samsung uh, in Korea. So just in Walgreens Boots, so we continue to be positive on the investment case there. So longer term, we believe uh, it will be a positive beneficiary from the, the aging demographics in the, in, the, uh, in the US. So we can see there's going to be a big shift in terms of the number of, of people in the US population over the age of 65. Why is that important for Walgreens? Well, someone out over the age of 65 tends to fill t- over twice the number of, of prescriptions that someone uh, that's below 65 does. And also the other big driver over the longer term for, for Walgreens is the fact that more people are coming under insurance coverage in the, in the US, especially from the, the Medicaid and, and Medicare um, state coverage uh, programs. And, and over, the, sh- over the, the more short term, we see a, a, a driver being the uh, the M&A activity that they've undertaken recently, the acquisitions of Rite Aid and Alliance Boots, as well as a return to generic uh, drug price deflation, uh, which benefits their margins. Marks and Spencers is, is due to report, and there we believe that we should continue to see good performance out of the, the food division, uh, where it should continue to show positive like-for-like momentum and, and slight market share gains. However, the investor focus will be much more on the general merchandise division, i.e. the, the clothing division, where uh, there, is the like, there is some potential for disappointment given negative comments made by um, next management um, in, in the uh, results recently. Uh, although we continue to expect margin improvements coming from Marks and Spencers, any weakness in, in top line growth will impact investor sentiment towards the, the, the name. And, and then finally, uh, Samsung is, is due to report its preliminary numbers for the first quarter. Uh, we have been negative on Samsung given the fact that it faces quite significant competition at the higher end of the Android smartphone market, but we will be looking for any comments that management make 
about how well its newly released S7 uh, smartphones are, are doing in the market. Um, that's all from us this week. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again in a week's time.